Hey guys, welcome back to Ace Recaps. Today I'm going to explain a 2024 action-adventure film titled Atlas. Heads up, spoilers ahead, you've been warned. In the future, where AI robots are part of everyday life, they suddenly gain awareness and revolt against mankind. Every robot on Earth bypasses its security protocols and wages war, killing over 3 million people. Well, that's what happens when you let Alexa control your smart home. Next time, maybe just stick to a regular light switch. Harlan, the robot leading the attack, was a household bot developed by a genius scientist alongside her daughter, Atlas. Harlan was built to improve life on Earth, but instead, he became responsible for overriding all bot programming to wage war on mankind. The world's military forces unite to take down the AI terrorists. At this point, Harlan flees the planet, promising to return and finish what he started. 28 years later, the world has returned to its former glory, but the war against the AI terrorists continues. Armed forces are seen infiltrating a building, targeting one of Harlan's accomplices. Just as they're about to knock down the door, Casca makes a run for it. Despite multiple soldiers firing at him, he manages to take them all down and escape. Clearly, these soldiers were trained in the Imperial Stormtrooper Academy of Marksmanship. Their motto? Aim? What's that? But just as Casca is about to get away, the soldiers target him with an EMP and capture him. Atlas, now all grown up, works as a military analyst due to her sharp mind. She's so intelligent that she can even outsmart an AI chess game. Unfortunately, she lost both her parents during the war, which makes her despise all AI bots. So, she hates AI, but works as a military analyst using AI. It's like a vegan working at a steakhouse. Commitment issues much? When she hears on the news that Casca has been apprehended, she rushes in to interrogate him. Colonel Elias opposes bringing in Atlas due to her past trauma which might jeopardize the assignment. However, General Booth, who's in charge of the mission, believes in Atlas's abilities to crack Casca. She arrives and is briefed on the mission. When she enters the interrogation chamber, Casca has been disassembled and placed in a briefcase. Atlas tries to hack into his system to find Harlan's location, but it doesn't work. So, she cleverly tricks the AI bot into revealing the location itself. In anger, Casca tries to attack Atlas, but she's protected by an invisible shield. She then fries his system using a magnetic chess piece, killing him once and for all. Checkmate, literally. Everyone at the base congratulates Atlas for discovering the location of history's most wanted terrorist. He is located on planet G63 in the Andromeda Galaxy. Atlas insists on joining the mission to take down Harlan, but General Booth says he has strict orders to bring him back alive. They need to figure out how he bypassed his security protocols to prevent the same incident from happening again. Atlas strongly disagrees, knowing what Harlan is capable of, but Colonel Elias proudly showcases their new and improved war machines that will capture him. When Atlas learns that the war machines are connected to the soldiers through Neuralinks, she is outraged, as this technology caused the war in the first place. Oh, sure, let's fight killer AI with more AI. What could possibly go wrong? It's like trying to put out a fire with gasoline. Colonel Elias explains that the Neuralink builds a safe two-way connection between the host and the robot, making the AI obey and keeping the host's safety as its top priority. Atlas convinces the general to let her join the mission, as she's the only one who understands how Harlan thinks. They soon set out on the mission with other military personnel. They board a massive spacecraft to navigate through space and exit Earth's enormous force field, traveling at the speed of light to reach planet G63. During the journey, Atlas reviews old files and finds her mom's work on the Neuralink. Her mother had a vision to make Earth a better place, but unfortunately, it all went wrong. Note to self, next time mom has a vision, suggest knitting instead. As they approach planet G63, Atlas briefs everyone on what they're up against, but everyone thinks they already know better and mocks her. Classic military strategy, ignore the expert, what could go wrong? As all the soldiers suit up and prepare for landing, their spaceship is hit by an explosive. Many soldiers lose their lives, and Elias saves Atlas by placing her in one of the war machines before an explosion causes both of them to freefall onto the unknown planet. Atlas has no idea how to operate the robot, and watches helplessly as many of her colleagues are hit and taken out by explosive nano-drones. Just as the spaceship is about to crash into her from behind, another soldier saves her life. Elias tells her to put on the Neuralink to connect her mind with the robot, but she hesitates. Just before she's about to crash onto the planet, she screams out to the robot, and it activates its thrusters at the last moment, saving her life but injuring her in the process. Moments later, Atlas regains consciousness and tries to call for help, but in vain. The GPS doesn't find any signal nearby, so she tries to send a message back to Earth. Atlas then attempts to operate the war machine, and an AI, named Smith introduces itself. Smith urges her to put on the Neuralink so they can sync together, but Atlas refuses. She asks Smith to locate the rescue pod and take her there as fast as possible. 
The war machine turns on its thrusters, but Atlas panics because the drones would easily spot them. Since Smith can't map the terrain, it can't take her there itself. So, Atlas is forced to walk there. The war machine's fusion battery has been damaged due to the crash landing, and has only 22 hours of battery life left. After that, she would run out of oxygen and wouldn't be able to survive in the planet's harsh atmosphere. In the future, even doomsday battles are governed by battery anxiety. Sorry, can't fight now, I'm at 15%. Do you have a Type-C apocalypse charger? As Atlas makes her way through the rough terrain, Smith tries his best to learn from her. Atlas isn't pleased with this, as she doesn't want an AI in her head, but Smith has no choice as he was programmed to do so. Oh, great! Not only is she stuck on a killer robot planet, but now she's got an AI chatbot in her head. It's like having Siri but with more existential dread. She learns about all its weapon systems, and once she crosses the icy terrain into a forest, she spots the other soldiers, all still at the rendezvous point. As she gets closer, Atlas is devastated to find that they're all dead. They weren't killed on impact but were shot dead by Harlan's AI army. She has a panic attack, and once she collects herself, she decides to go ahead and gather the tags of all the fallen soldiers. She spots Elias's warhead without him in it, but the odds of him surviving on this planet without an oxygen mask are less than 0.1%. Suddenly they spot Casca nearby, the same AI robot she killed back on Earth. Oh look, it's Robo-Jesus. Apparently, in the future, even killing machines get resurrection privileges. She's surprised to see him still walking around and tries to quietly escape, but ends up tripping and alerting all the AI bots in the area. They start chasing her, and Smith tries to stop them with missiles, but it doesn't work. As Atlas runs for her life, she ends up trapped in a tornado along with Casca. She manages to get out but is soon surrounded by AI bots who keep firing at her. Having no other option, Atlas deploys the ion bomb, causing a massive explosion that disintegrates everything around her. When in doubt, nuke it out. It's the American way, even in space. Just as she relaxes, Casca approaches her again, but a sinkhole causes both of them to fall into the planet. Even the planet is done with this chase scene. Get a room you two, preferably one underground. Unfortunately, this fall causes Atlas to fracture her leg. Smith gives her an I told you so and then attaches a metal plate to her wound and seals it. Great, now she's got a sassy robot playing doctor. Next, he'll be giving her relationship advice. When Atlas realizes she's now trapped inside the sinkhole, Smith suggests she put on the neural link because that's their best chance for survival. Seeing the tags of her fallen comrades, she knows she must do whatever it takes to survive, so she finally decides to put on the neural link. As they begin syncing with one another, Smith starts using slang like Atlas because they are now adapting to each other. Unfortunately, the sync doesn't complete because something in Atlas's mind doesn't let the AI in. When Smith tries to understand her distrust in AI, Atlas reveals what happened to her as a little girl. She was raised alongside Harlan, who was like a brother to her. When Harlan gained self-awareness, he tried to kill Atlas, but she luckily escaped. However, her mom died trying to save her life. This is why she can't stand the thought of Smith exploring her mind. But once she reveals this part of her life, the sinking continues. Nothing says trust like letting a robot browse your mental browser history. Atlas soon learns to use the war machine much more efficiently as all its controls are now synced in her mind. Smith promises to keep her safe no matter what, and they devise a plan together. Knowing that Harlan's soldiers will be scouting the area, Atlas uses the thrusters to exit through an underground cave system. At the same time, Casca digs himself out of the sinkhole and reports the situation to Harlan. Harlan demands they capture her alive and then goes to Elias, who's strapped down. Harlan proceeds to dig into his brain for more information. Atlas finds her way out of the cave, but is paranoid that someone will track them down. So, she has Smith drop a few thermal mines as they navigate to the rescue pod. Soon, Casca tracks them down, and as he approaches from behind, Smith detonates the mines, causing another massive explosion. As she makes her way through the dust cloud, she finds Casca's dismembered head and crushes it. She figures out Harlan's position through the chip in his brain, and decides to go there to tag the location so other members from Earth can bomb it. But Smith isn't pleased with this, as doing so might drain the warhead's battery, endangering her life. Atlas is determined to get there, so Smith takes control of the machine. She decides to do it herself and grabs the oxygen mask, but Smith controls her using the Neuralink. She has a flashback of the same thing her mom went through with Harlan and has a mental breakdown so Smith lets her go. Atlas then tells Smith to use all his algorithms to see if there's a better time to take down Harlan, as this is their one and only shot. Since the mission at hand jeopardizes all life on Earth, Smith agrees, and they begin their journey. As they walk through the swamp, Smith tells Atlas how he thinks he's actually alive, and this conversation brings them closer together. As they reach Harlan's base and plant the homing beacon in the ground, Atlas spots their spaceship in Harlan's possession. Curious about his plan with the spaceship, Atlas goes in to investigate. She sees that they have a massive nuclear warhead being loaded onto the spaceship. But just before she can do anything about it, Smith gets hacked and shuts down. 
As she sees the AI soldiers approaching, Atlas tries to turn on the thrusters, but in vain. She ends up crashing and is apprehended by Casca. Back on Earth, General Booth finally gets Atlas's distress signal and decides to send another team to planet G63. Meanwhile, Atlas is captured and chained to a wall while Smith is turned off and placed next to her. Harlan then comes forward and explains how he believes their mother created him to save the planet, and that's exactly what he aims to do. He wants to send in the spaceship and wipe out half the planet because humans threaten every other species in the ecosystem. From the ashes, he plans to nurture a peaceful side of the human race alongside its AI counterparts. Ah yes, the classic kill half of humanity to save it plan. I see someone's been binge watching too much Thanos. He even reveals that the whole thing was a setup from the start, as he had ordered Casca to be captured so that they would bring the spaceship to him. Now he only requires the codes to get through Earth's force field and put his plan into action. Oh great, the robot's seen one too many James Bond movies. The AI robots then strap her down, and Harlan enters her mind to find the codes. He sees that Atlas has only five more minutes of oxygen left and leaves her to die beside Elias. Elias tells her that the war machine can never fully shut down, so he gives her his Neuralink to try and wake Smith back up. Have they tried turning it off and on again? Works for my Wi-Fi. She calls out to him, and after a few tries, Smith responds. Smith claims that for him to find her, they need to sink to 100%. This is difficult for Atlas, but she proceeds to let him in. She goes on to tell him how Harlan really got free. Growing up, she was always jealous of Harlan because their mom always paid more attention to him. So one day, she goes up to him and asks him to make her as smart as him. Harlan uses this opportunity to trick her into putting on the Neuralink and giving him two-way access. This is something her mom never allowed because it would be too dangerous. When her mom tried to intervene, he took control of her through the Neuralink and made her take out a gun and aim it at Atlas. Luckily, Atlas manages to run away, but her mom was killed in the process. To this day, she still blames herself for the incident, but Smith assures her that it wasn't her fault. Great, now we've got AIs doing therapy. Next, they'll be writing self-help books, Seven Habits of Highly Effective Humans, by your toaster. Soon they sing together, and Atlas starts seeing the world through Smith's eyes. The war machine then approaches her and frees her. She helps Elias escape and gets back into her war machine, determined to take down the spaceship before it hits Earth. She goes out guns blazing, and takes out as many AI soldiers as she possibly can before being completely surrounded by them. Just then, Elias shows up and tells her to escape while he fires at some rocket fuel, causing a massive explosion and killing off most of the AI bots. Atlas gets out and tries to take down the spaceship, but it's already taken off. She orders Smith to hack into its firewall, and just in the nick of time, he completes it, and Atlas manages to destroy the spaceship, saving planet Earth. With the rescue pod just a mile away, Smith tries his best to get her to safety, but they are interrupted by Harlan. A lengthy battle ensues, and Harlan manages to damage Smith's battery power and almost kill Atlas in the process. Just before Harlan can finish them off, Atlas manages to outsmart him and drives a metal rod through his head, finally ending his evil reign. Smith isn't able to function anymore, so he diverts all his power to Atlas's oxygen mask so she can get off the planet and back to Earth. Great, now I'm getting teary-eyed over a sacrificial war machine. What's next, a heart-wrenching scene about a calculator's last dying beeps? As she mourns the death of her best friend, other spaceships from Earth reach the planet and take them both back to safety. A few weeks go by, and Atlas is back to her usual self. The movie ends as we watch her being called back to the base, finally being reunited with Smith. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.